Hello, welcome to 3DX. This is another video where in this case I'm going to be creating a, a relatively simple stylized trash can. So what I have here are some reference images. Most of these I found through just Google search and that I just got a few images of a, a relatively generic, um, I guess it's an aluminum trash can here. And I'm going to be using that for my reference, essentially. But as always, since this is going to be stylized, I'm going to exaggerate some of the shapes. And I also want to change the color. I don't want it to be just this gray, uh, generic color, just because, you know, it just doesn't look that interesting. And this is not supposed to be a realistic model anyway. So I'm going to be using it mostly for reference, but at the same time, I'm going to exaggerate some of the areas. And also, when it comes to the texturing section, I'm also going to not go with the generic, boring, grey color. So, what I'm going to be doing here is, for the most part, the low poly in Maya. And what I'll do is also create the high poly model in Maya as well. This is one of those cases where you don't really need to take it into ZBrush. Now, if you wanted to add like extra small details, uh, like scratches, dents, and stuff like that. I guess you could take it to ZBrush, but even then, I think those details can be added uh, within Substance Painter if you wanted to. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the low and high poly models, both in Maya. And so this project, I'm just going to use Maya and Substance Painter. And as always, notice that I'm using, for the most part, uh, primitive objects to create the model and as, al as always I like to keep it simple and that's why I usually just use the primitive objects and along with sub D mode here and then once I'm done I just smooth the object and get rid of any extra geometry that's not really needed so I usually like to work like that sometimes it's really it's a lot easier to work in subdivision mode and then smooth the object and then get rid of any geometry that's not really needed. I find that that usually works for the most part. So I'm also going to create the interior for this, even though I don't really plan to show it uh, with the uh, without the, the lid, uh, but just in case, I just created the interior as well. Then I'm going to group it and use a tool for renaming. Uh, there's a link in the video description if you want to uh, use that tool for renaming. Obviously, you can just rename objects manually as well, uh, but there's a link in the video description for that. It is an affiliate link, by the way. And then I'm going to create the UVs, which are going to be, for the most part, really straightforward. So mostly planar maps along with uh, just kind of using the unfold tool as well. And I'm going to straighten out some of the uh, cylindrical shapes. And then I'm just going to pack it a little bit better. It's good to just kind of like get them a little bit better uh, packed here in the UV editor. Obviously you still want to have some spacing uh, just because you don't want to have like texture bleeding. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to duplicate the handle on the other side and then offset the UVs and then duplicate the group and rename it high poly. And this one I'm going to just add more um, supporting edges and preview it also in sub D mode. I'm also going to be exporting it in sub D mode. So I'm going to be adding all those details here in Maya, essentially creating the high poly in Maya without having to export this to ZBrush. And I'm also going to add more geometry here for the top as well. Mm 
Then I'm going to combine those pieces at the top. Make sure you keep the same names so that you can bake by name in Substance Painter. And so I'm going to export this to Substance Painter for actual textures. So now in Substance I loaded a low poly and then I'm going to bake the normal map and world space. I like to just bake those two first just so that I can see if there are any artifacts or anything wrong with the uh, bake. That way I don't have to wait for all the other maps to bake. And I can just go one by one. Now I'm going to use the 3DX stylized material. If you want to learn how to make it, there's a link in the video description as well. So I'm going to be using that material for the stylized look. And I don't want this to be a metallic uh, material, I just want this to be... Honestly, I want it to look more like a plastic type uh, of material. And I don't, like I said, I don't want to want, I don't want to go with a generic gray color. So I just want to break it up a little bit here. And that's one of the nice things with stylized models is that you can kind of exaggerate and then just kind of play with the uh, actual colors of things. You don't have to follow, you know, what things look like in real life ex exactly. You can just kind of make stuff up as well. And I'm just making sure that this looks a little bit more shiny as well. So it's kind of like a plastic material, really. So I just want to just want to experiment here with what the colors look like. Just want to get some colors that look good together. And I'm also going to add a little bit of damage. So like I mentioned before, uh, you could have done this in ZBrush, but it's also something you can do within Substance Painter where you can just add a little bit of damage to your model, either manually like I'm doing it here or just using a procedural mask as well. And this is just to give it more uh, variation so that it's not super clean. It's got a little bit of a few chips here and there. And I'm also going to add a little bit of variation to the roughness so it's not a uh, uniform roughness uh, value but I reduce the opacity of that as well just so that it doesn't overtake the roughness and then I like to add a curvature on top just to highlight some of the uh, curves, curves a little bit better and then I'll use a gradient as well just to kind of make the base look a little bit more dirty Since my UVs are relatively straight for that uh, part, this works really well, using a gradient map on that. And then finally I just experiment a little bit with some edge variation as well. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this one. So here is what it looks like in Marmoset Toolback. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, I recommend you subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad so that there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. So you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.